We are tracking yet another winter storm. This is drone video of the Skagit River near Concrete today showing just how much snow has fallen in one of the hardest hit areas this week. Now at 5 o'clock, we're monitoring the crisis along Highway 2. Supplies arrived today helping residents who have been without power for days. And the roadblock has been moved from Gold Bar up to the Skykomish area. The State Department of Transportation flew a helicopter above the blockade and it shows just how buried Highway 2 is. All the lanes covered by that thick blanket of snow. Good evening, I'm Joyce Taylor. I'm Mark Wright, thanks for being here. So people in that snow stricken area are pretty upset tonight. Yeah. Some blame the governor for a slow response. So we asked Governor Inslee point blank today for answers. Tonight, Chris Daniels has the governor's response. We begin though with Eric Wilkinson, live in Gold Bar with a look at how people are coping there. Eric. Yeah, many here have been without power since last Friday and with food and fuel in short supply and no help from the government in sight, people here today took matters into their own hands. Loaded with all the provisions they could carry, about a dozen trucks made the trek up Stevens Pass to neighbors in need. There's like four houses on top of the mountain that don't have anything. Hundreds of people between Gold Bar and Skykomish left snowbound when the pass closed Sunday night as heavy snow brought down trees and power lines. Oh, I haven't had power for four or five days. I haven't had water for uh, three days. Um, you know, I'm running on a generator, one propane heater. Um, pretty crazy. People in neighboring communities collected thousands of dollars in donations, water, food, and fuel, making sure these total strangers were taken care of. We're a hearty bunch, you know. We, if it comes down to it, we'll just get it done. You can ask for help once and then you just get it done yourself. Now, many of these folks will bring the supplies even deeper into the mountains, where many remain unable to get out of their homes. For now, they're grateful for the generosity of their neighbors and for the simplicity of small town self-sufficiency. Brought me to tears, you know. I mean, it's, people just don't do that anymore. You just don't hear about it, you know. And this just restores all the faith in humanity I've lost. I'm happy to be a Skykomanite, <laughs> if that's how you say it. <laughs> this is the type of help that just warms you when nothing else does. And it looks like those supplies came in just a nick of time as we are in the midst of a pretty wicked windstorm here along Stevens Pass that is likely to bring down more trees and more power lines. Now this whole thing has brewed up a bit of a political storm as well with some asking whether Governor Inslee should have done more. With more on that, let's go to King 5's Chris Daniels. Chris. Yeah, Eric, Governor Inslee says he has spoken with the mayors of Gold Bar and Skykomish and says they never specifically asked for help, despite the stories that you're hearing further up the road. And he is defending the state's response. If you can't do it on the ground, why not attack the problem in the air? That was the strategy today from WashDOT, which had crews flying helicopters over Highway 2 and use their rotor wash to blow the snow out of the trees. WashDOT Secretary Roger Millar telling King 5 the agency used the technique to lessen the weight on the trees and power lines, which have created the emergency on the highway. Today, Washington Governor Jay Inslee defended the state's response in an exclusive interview. Should the state have gotten in there earlier? I think they have been in there earlier. It's just so risky to these crews. He says an emergency management convoy did bring in water, food, and fuel to the struggling town of Skykomish, which has been isolated by the winter blast, and that he used executive authority to free up funds for the response. We can't have any prediction of the exact time, but I think we're exercising extraordinary efforts. Do you, do you feel that the state quickly reacted in this situation? Yes, I do, and I, but I understand where they're coming from, too, when you're without power and without access and without communications, nothing is quickly enough. Are, are we days away from opening that road? Are, are we hours away? Do you, can you even say that? I can't even say at this point. Um, the, the trees, there are dozens of trees that are down. There's live power lines mixed in with all of that. We've used our emergency contracting provisions to bring in tree cutters. I mean, we cut trees as you know, on our teams. We don't have enough people. So we, we're bringing private people in to help with that. So you heard Millar and Inslee refer to it there that they executed an executive authority to free up some funding so they didn't have to go through an RFP process to allow those contractors to go through and try and cut down some of those trees. 
and get some of those power lines off the road. They say that was one of the ways they've tried to speed up the state response here along Highway 2. That's the story for now. Live in Monroe, I'm Chris Daniels, King 5 News. All right, Chris, thank you. Well, East King County and Snohomish County have also been hit really hard. We're going to check in with Glenn and Natalie in just a moment. Right now, let's get right to meteorologist Craig Herrera with details about high winds moving into the northwest. Craig. Yeah, a lot of that wind that we've been watching uh, is going to come through. We've seen those gusts up to 50 to 60 miles per hour, and I'm restarting the computer. Bear with me here. Uh, so those winds are coming in out of the east and southeast. As they come down the hill, they warm up a bit. Warming up is changing a lot of that as far as the temperature. So we're seeing a lot of this turn back into rain. So we have a rain snow mix. The wind advisory or the wind warning does uh, take us right through about midnight. I'll have more on that coming up in just a moment, Mark. Okay, Craig, we'll let you get that computer back running. Meantime, Skagit County wound up being a big target for snow last night. More is coming down this evening. King 5's Glenn Farley is live in Burlington and Glenn. It looks like a pretty impressive snowfall where you are and wind. Well, it, it, it is and it's also as Craig pointed out, it's an impressive wind event down here. Now it's not 60 miles per hour here in town, but I've been looking at gusts that have been going up to 15 miles per hour here in town. And most of the snow that I'm seeing now is snow that's blowing. There we go, 15.4 miles per hour right there. Um, but it's there's snow here and then more and more snow as you go further east. It's dig out day in Burlington. Nature is always packing a surprise, it seems, outside the DeCamp and Stratford Furniture Store in downtown Burlington. It's been a couple years. A couple years. At least, yeah. Don Olson is shoveling the walks, expecting customers will still make it in. How many inches? We'll go with six. You're going to go with six? We'll call six. It's snow expected to hit further south, but east, deeper into the mountains, but just still a few hundred feet in elevation, the town of Concrete gets a blast of snow. It's everywhere. It's pretty, but whether it's on the roads or on the sidewalk in town, it still works. So went to the hardware store, got a yardstick. I don't think a ruler could do it. Check out this bench. About 13 and a half inches. It's quite a bit. Yeah, we're actually walking to the bakery. We found Rachel Richter and Sarah Miller checking it out. And we thought we were going to get it earlier in the week. This town is no stranger to snow, but until last night, it looked like winter was going to be a no-show. So 24 hours ago, if we were standing yeah, here, was there was anything? A little there, bit, not much. A little bit, but not a lot. And then all of a sudden, just kept going and yeah. going. Winter along the Skagit River appearing, for now at least, here to stay. Now, we've seen on our anemometer here, yeah, it just calms down maybe two miles per hour, 4.7, 8.5. We got one up to about 15.4, as I said, so almost 15 and a half. Hasn't really gone above that here, but it's been going on all day like that. And if we go down, you can see what this does. You can kind of see where the snow, because of the wind, has been sort of scoured out and gets moved around. Um, yeah, we sort of had drifts. It's not huge, but the wind is actually playing a role in rearranging the snow here in Burlington. Oh, there you go again. That's a good, oh, we just lost our power. Anyway, it's a lot. So, but this is not the only place where this kind of stuff is happening. Natalie Swaby is down in parts of Snohomish County that also got pretty hard hit last night, Natalie. Yeah, that's right, Glenn. We are driving through Snohomish County all day, northern part of the county specifically. And right now we're in Darrington. I'm going to show you what the roads look like right now. You can see this snow covered. We're seeing a lot of wind and those gusts have been a big problem in the northern part of the county for Snohomish PUD. We were able to follow along with a crew today and here's the situation here. We've been talking with neighbors right here in this neighborhood and they told us overnight they got about 19 inches of new snow. All that snow is weighing down the trees and that is creating a serious hazard. In Darrington, the weather's delivering the usual obstacles for Snohomish PUD. Lots of snow and wind. We'll just watch the wind. When it gets too severe, when there's too much coming down, we'll back off. 
is to keep it safe. Law informant Ted Lewis and his crew have been working in the northern part of Snohomish County. For a couple days, like 16 hours out of whack, trying to keep the power up, right? We just got to get through it. Power outages have been a problem countywide. We lost power last night. Twice. Jamie Olson is happy to have the help from Snohomish PUD and neighbors. Just under the whole driveway so we can get out. As neighborhoods dig out, this crew is digging in for what could be a couple more long days. And they'll have this complete in a minute. We'll have everybody back on. It's little things, right? Just little things like this we have to tackle and get them back up. There's a need. And, but you have to go step at a time and be patient, right? And we'll get to everybody in time. But. All right, and we're live here in Darrington on Darrington Street. And we're noticing a lot of driveways still packed with snow cars that haven't moved in a number of days. As far as the power outages, crews have been able to restore power for more than 44,000 customers throughout Snohomish County. But the conditions that we're dealing with right now, the gusty winds, that's the reason why power outages continue to be a problem. Snohomish PUD telling me that they've brought on at least seven contract crews to help with all the work. Live in Darrington, Natalie Swaby, King 5 News. Natalie, thank you. Well, a lot of school districts have been impacted by the heavy snow. They've already reported changes for tomorrow. So heads up, Bellingham, Burlington, Edison, Ferndale, Mount Baker, Port Angeles, Squim, and Skykomish will all be closed. They're in red. Now the changes in yellow, these are late starts. Uh, they are Darrington, Everett, Anacortes, Lake Washington, Meridian, Mount Vernon, and Cedro Woolley are all planning a late start. We will bring you updates all evening long as these change. You can also find the latest at king5.com and on our King 5 mobile app. Well, Port Angeles is digging out from under more than a foot of snow. Other areas on the Olympic Peninsula reported closer to two feet. Two feet of snow still coming down in some areas. Road crews have been working around the clock trying to keep Highway 101 clear. Well, here's another look at just how much snow fell in Port Angeles. This is funny. Christy recorded this video last night. Check out that thick blanket of snow covering the driveway and the road and her dogs. Sure enjoyed playing in the snow. Her mm -hmm. shepherd is named Phoenix, the Rottweiler named Louie. Loving jumping around in all that <laughs> deep snow. Wow. Hey, you can keep track of the weather and how it's impacting your neighborhood with the brand new King 5 app. It's free. It allows you to see current temperatures all over the region. It has interactive radar. Just text the word app to 206-448-4545 and we'll send you a link.